plenty of seats still in the front row, yeah. So welcome um, to our annual Chef International Awards ceremony. Um, it's really one of the highlights of the year for the University Center for International Studies, and we're so glad that you could join us. If you're curious about the setup this morning, we are privileged enough to have one of our awardees, Silver, um, participating today remotely via live stream. So we say hello to him. And the reason that the room is set up the way that it is is to make sure that he gets the full breath of everyone who is here to celebrate his accomplishments this morning. My name is Belkis Torres. I'm the Executive Director for Global Engagement at the University Center for International Studies. And it's really an honor for me to emcee today's event. As many of you know, today we are kicking off Pitt's annual International Education Week. And it's an opportunity to celebrate the benefits of international studies um, and cultural and academic exchange across our institution. This is a week where Really, we offer students, as well as faculty and staff like you today, an array of programming that spans from um, a variety of activities, including international speed friending for international and domestic students to connect, um, international food trucks as well. There's also a full day international student career conference that helps international students think about how to develop their professional skill sets upon return um, once they graduate and to um, join the job market wherever they call home. So we're really excited about that. And there's an entire day of professional development opportunities toward the end of the week in partnership with the UAS7, which is an alliance of seven German universities of applied sciences. So this promises to be an incredibly rich week of activities, there are over 25 um, activities on the calendar if you're interested in learning more. Um, you can find information on the cards on the tables behind you after the ceremony has concluded. I'd like to take a moment though um, to recognize Jeff Whitehead who is the Director of Study Abroad. If you wanna stand and be recognized, Jeff, as well as the members of the International Week Committee. If you comprise the International Week Committee, would you please stand and be recognized at this time? These folks work an entire year to put programming together. There's a lot more of you. I know, I know. And so we're, we're thankful for your efforts. You know, International um, Education Week is actually a joint national initiative of the U.S. Department of State and the U.S. Department of Education meant to promote how international programs do two things. One, how they prepare students uh, for an increasingly global environment, and two, um, invite the world's future leaders to exchange ideas and experiences across the United States. And so it's only fitting then that we begin this week by really honoring members of our own PIC community with the Chef International Awards. Each year, this prestigious award recognizes two notable recipients, one distinguished faculty member and one young alum, both of whom embody Pitt's mission and commitment to being a global university. The University Center for International Studies began these awards back in 2012, um, thanks to the generosity of Pitt alum, Dr. Jagdish Sheth, um, Mrs. Maduri Sheth, and the Sheth Family Foundation. Unfortunately, Dr. Sheth and Mrs. Sheth aren't here in Pittsburgh today, but we will have a video greeting that we'll share with you a bit later in the program. You know, each year there's also a committee of faculty and staff representing schools across campus that's convened to review the number of nominations submitted by all of you and the rest of our campus community for these two distinguished awards. And this year was no different. Given the excellence of the Pitt community of faculty and alumni, this is always a really difficult decision. How do we pick just the one? Um, yet the two winners that we are honoring today clearly stood out ahead of the others for their distinguished contributions. And so I'd like to take a moment um, to thank Jason Kane for his leadership of this entire project, as well as thanking the entire um, award committee for their effort in identifying this year's winners. Please join me in thanking them. Now I'd like to introduce the University of Pittsburgh's Vice Provost for Global Affairs and the Director of the University Center for International Studies, Dr. Ariel Armini. As you all know, Dr. Armini is a champion of all initiatives that take Pitt to the world and bring the world to Pitt. Yet he takes enormous pride in events like this one where we get to shine a spotlight on the impactful work that faculty, students, and alum are advancing around the world. 
Please join me in welcoming Dr. Armini to the podium. Good morning. Before I start with the formal program, I want to thank Dr. Belkis Torres, uh, our Executive Director of Global Engagement, and Jason Kane, our Director of Constituent Relations, both of whom are major forces behind everything we do at the university to advance a comprehensive agenda of global engagement. The pride they take in their work is truly inspiring. Of course, thank you to everyone in attendance. We could not have events like today's without all of your continued support. The Sheath Awards are an annual highlight for the University Center for International Studies. It's now a tradition that they coincide with the beginning of International Week. I cannot think of a more perfect start the stories of our amazing awardees remind the entire Pitt community that global learning and engagement are at the heart of our university's mission. Our Chancellor Patrick Gallagher recently affirmed this in a much appreciated statement to the Pitt community in support of global education. In his message, Chancellor Gallagher asserted that our mission as a university to leverage knowledge for society's gain demands a global perspective. We do this through collaboration with the world's most distinguished scholars, universities, and research institutions. The Chancellor's message was very clear. Robust global academic engagement is crucial for Pitt's continued mission as a research university, a university engaged with communities worldwide. By taking a position on this matter, Pitt joined Caltech, Johns Hopkins, Yale, Berkeley, Columbia, and Stanford in support of global engagement. As I'm sure I don't have to remind any of you, we are living in challenging times. I think it would be fair to say that as educators with an emphasis on global and international issues, we feel this particularly intensely. This is unfortunate, unfortunately, an era marked by xenophobia and closing borders. However, as a university and as a global community, we live by the doctrine that our world is an interconnected one. Economies, cultures, languages, and people are tied together in multiple ways, and these very phenomena are not only what we spend our time studying, but also what defines who we are. And that means protecting and highlighting the people at the forefront of this work. As Chancellor Gallagher, beautifully wrote to the international member of our academic community, you belong here. That also spreads to the people supporting this international work, including everyone at the amazing University Center for International Studies, and of course, the two winners of today's awards. This reminder has never been more important. At other institutions, global engagement and academic exchange are threatened because of growing uncertainty and fear, but not at Pitt. Here, we remain fully committed to fostering our global community and defining for the world exactly what it means to be a global university. This is why we are all here today, and work that I will plead all of you to continue. Today's award winners exemplify this philosophy, and we are honored to recognize them. For each, we think about uh, what our goals are as a university, expanding the borders of our campus to reach out to policymakers, 
social activists, business leaders, and community stakeholders around the world to engage in a truly reciprocal cooperation. Engaging with a diverse community makes us better as individuals and as an institution. A global university is one that embraces a global mindset. This means a form of action guided by the imperative of stepping outside one's base culture and the awareness that there is no universally correct way of doing things. The award winners set themselves apart through their efforts to advance this crucial mission. For the Chef Faculty Award, we look for someone who has gone above and beyond what it means to create a classroom and a learning environment that embodies an international education. Past winners of this award have been engineers, medical doctors, and anthropologists. They have developed training curricula for undertaking medical studies in foreign countries and helped create new global education opportunities for our students. They all help motivate the rest of us to push past our potential. For the Alumni Award, we look for someone who has taken the lessons they learned at Pitt to heart after they graduated. These are young women and men who have contributed to the international community through professional achievement and societal impact. One past winner became a top political voice in Kosovo, receiving more votes than any other woman in the history of its, param of its parliamentary elections. Another is the director of international studies at a university in Nigeria, where he promotes multiculturalism among faculty and students. This year, our faculty awardee is Professor Ron Brand. As you all know, Professor Brand's work in the field of international legal education is truly legendary. His impressive accomplishments will be described in detail later on today, but I just want to highlight that besides his important work in international law, he has won virtually every major teaching award that Pitt offers. This is the model of a Pitt professor, one who not only is a leader in research, but realizes and cherishes the value of teaching as well. He's not only a vital member of the world's legal community, but an incredible resource and mentor to his students as well. Our young alumni awardee is Mr. Silbert Francis Onyu, who inspires people around the world with his work in inclusive education. We are incredibly proud to recognize his contributions back here at his alma mater, which he graduated from in 2012 with a master's degree from our School of Education. When Mr. Onyu was four, he lost his sight due to misless. Since graduating from Pitt, he has worked tirelessly to make sure that every child with blindness and visual impairment receives the education services that they deserve. He has also helped to connect Pittsburgh with his home of Uganda through charitable campaigns with local nonprofits and advocacy groups. Mr. Onyu has received a great deal of international recognition for his work, and we are thrilled to honor him with the Chef Award. So before we move on to the formal awards, I want to recognize a few of our special guests. We are honored to have with us Chancellor Emeritus Mark Nordenberg, a longtime supporter of the University Center for International Studies. He remains engaged in key public service projects focused on the advancement of the region. He has been involved in essential initiatives throughout our community, including around incarceration and the opioid crisis. It's a true honor to have Mark here with us today. We are also honored to have Dean Amy Wildermuth, the School of Law's new leader, 
and Dean Valerie Kinlock, the Rene and Richard Goldman deal of, Dean of our School of Education to participate in today's ceremony. I want to say that it's a privilege to be at an institution that has been able to recruit these extraordinary leaders. So thank you so much for all your work and for being here today. As we are live streaming the event, I want to welcome the family, friends, and colleagues of our awardees who are watching from Uganda and around the world. Speed stretches far beyond our campus here, and events like today's serve as necessary reminders of how big our community truly is. And I want to make special mention of two people with us today, Lorraine and Les Sabo, who are Mr. Ono's US parents, who continue to support his success from right here in Pittsburgh. Thank you both for being here. Finally, I want to personally thank Jag and Madhu Chef, as their support and that of the Chef Family Foundation means the world to us. I had the pleasure of visiting Jag and Madhu in Atlanta a few months ago. Jag's help and advice in planning our recent trip to India with Chancellor Gallagher was invaluable. Finally, again, I want to repeat my thanks to all of you for being here, for being part of the 2019 Chef International Awards. Thank you. This morning's first awardee it should come as no surprise, is someone who's very near and dear to the hearts of all of us at USIS. We not only consider him an expert, um, but we think of him as a friend, and oftentimes as a partner in crime. And so it is no surprise that uh, when Dean Wildermuth received the news of uh, Ron Brand's acceptance and, and recognition of this award, she was more than elated uh, to be here this morning to speak a little bit about um, the School of Law's commitment um, to embracing the world and to talk a little bit about how Ron and the Center for International Legal Education have advanced um, that goal over the years. Dean Wildermuth is currently uh, the Dean of our School of Law as of July of 2018. She joins Pitt Law from the University of Utah, where she was a professor of law in the S.J. Kinney College of Law and associate vice president for faculty and academic affairs at the university. She was also the University of Utah's first chief sustainability officer. Professor Wildermuth earned both a Juris Doctorate and a Master of Science in Environmental Engineering from the University of Illinois. Before joining the law faculty at the University of Utah, she served as a law clerk to Justice uh, John Paul Stevens of the Supreme Court of the United States. She also clerked for Judge Harry T. Edwards of the DC Circuit and uh, Judge Guido Calabresi of the Second Circuit. Respected for her scholarship in the areas of civil procedure, administrative law, environmental law, and the US Supreme Court practice, Professor Wilderman's work has been published in law journals such as the Northwestern Law Review, the Emory Law Journal, and the Minnesota Law Review, among others. In addition to her academic work, Professor Wildermuth has presented, uh, represented rather, several parties as uh, amicus curiae in cases before the U.S. Supreme Court. Dean Wildermuth is also an award-winning teacher um, who has taught many courses over her career, including civil procedure, property, federal courts, administrative law, environmental law, wildlife law, and U.S. Supreme Court practice. The University of Utah's S.J. Kinney College of Law recognized her contributions with its Early Career Faculty Award, its Faculty Service Award, and the Peter W. Billings Excellence in Teaching Award. It is really an honor uh, to welcome Dean Wildermuth to the stage. Please join me in welcoming her.
Thank you so much. It is such an honor to be here today. I want to thank again the Sheth family for their generosity. I want to thank the selection committee for their work and of course Dr. Armini's incredible and wonderful team for putting all of this together today. It is my great pleasure to speak briefly today on behalf of Ron Brand, the longtime director of our CILE, the Center for International Legal Education, and the professor extraordinaire of Pitt Law. I share the stage today with another giant, Chancellor Emeritus Mark Nordenberg, who, along with Renee Martin Nagel, nominated Ron for this award and will follow me shortly. I have to say, when I woke up this morning, I thought, really? This is a lot. <laughs> but I'm going to do my best, right? OK. So although Mark and Ron have many collective and productive years together, it did not take me very long to understand Ron's incredible impact. This fall marks our 25th LLM student class. These students are foreign trained lawyers who come for one year to learn about American law and, perhaps more importantly, enrich our classrooms by providing their important global perspectives. It is also the 25th year of programming under the CILE banner. Among the many offerings of CILE, there are lectures, including the famed McLean Lecture, numerous study abroad opportunities, including a year at the Sorbonne, and many competitions in which our teams have fared very well, including the Vismut competition. Ron built CILE and its many programs with the help of many wonderful colleagues over the years. Those folks include people like Harry Fleckner, Haider Hamoudi, and Vivian Curran, and scores of Pitt Law alums and friends. I asked one of his colleagues, Vivian Curran, to provide some reflections on Ron on this special day. She said, among the qualities I have most admired about Ron are his dedication to having the LLM program be a force for good. In the post-Soviet era, we had students from many countries that were founding new legal and political systems. The students we taught knew they would be the leaders of their countries and that we were giving them the opportunity of their lives. Ron and I worked hard to find funding for them to come here, and it has been one of the greatest privileges of my life to teach them. I think this may be true for other colleagues, too. When I have been approached by educated African lawyers living in France who wish to get an LLM here, but are impoverished, I know that I can always tell them that they will have a chance with our program so long as our own budget can manage it. And this is because Ron was never trying to exploit the students, but to serve them, to enrich our law school community, and to send back our contributions to the many parts of the world that we touched through his efforts. Because of what Ron has built, women from some countries had their first opportunity to engage in international travel, and to be treated on par with men. He has been tireless in providing opportunities to our students and to others all over the world. In this process, he has made friends for Pitt in every corner of the world. It is Ron who has made it our collective duty to provide an education to many who would not otherwise be well served and in places where it will make a difference and have real impact. As but one example of Ron's global reach, a graduate of both the LLM and SJD programs at Pitt Law mentioned earlier, Dr. Vyosa Osmani, who is also one of the Chef Award winners, is a candidate for prime minister in Kosovo. But Ron's reach is not just on the global scale. He also pays attention to all the small things, too. When we could not reach a recent grad to check in on his bar exam progress, we asked Ron to reach out. 
And the next thing I knew, I saw them together eating lunch, Ron checking in on him. It would be hard to imagine someone with more impact, big and small, on the world. In addition to the opportunities provided at Pitt, I must also mention Ron's incredible dedication to the VIS moot. Every year, Ron ensures that teams from places like Ukraine, the Balkans, Africa, and the Middle East are provided with support and help from his network of affiliates so they are able to compete in this important and even life-changing competition every spring. As Ron reflected in his last CILE notes, the newsletter of the center, which is yet another one of Ron's Herculean undertakings, he said, I have seen our students become major con contributors in government, academia, and the private sector in ways that advance the rule of law and make life better for others. Those are rewards few can claim from a career, and I am humbled to have been a part of this process and look forward to even more of it. Ron, we are deeply grateful for all you do at Pitt Law and for the world. Your vision for CILE and the programs at Pitt have always set a high goal, the betterment of humankind. And you have no doubt achieved that lofty goal. There are many lives and many places that are truly better for all you have done. It is an incredible honor for me to be your colleague and to be part of this award today. Thank you for your many, many years of commitment and service and your incredible legacy of caring and caring deeply about those who are often looked over or left behind. I cannot think of a more deserving recipient of this award. On this very special day, I extend my heartfelt congratulations to you, Ron. Thank you. And now, as I mentioned, I get to introduce someone who needs no introduction. It's sort of like those famous superstars with one name. So please join me in welcoming Chancellor Emeritus Mark Nordenberg. Thanks, everyone. It's great to be with all of you here today. Uh, I feel particularly privileged to be paired with Dean Wildermuth in presenting Ron Brand today. Uh, I was privileged to join with uh, Renee Martin Nagel in nominating Ron for this award. Uh, and I do want to say it is a privilege to be connected in any way to the chefs. Uh, it is their generosity and uh, their vision that really created the opportunity for us to recognize people like Ron. Uh, and it is important to note that uh, Dr. Sheff is not only one of our most generous graduates, but he is one of our most distinguished graduates. Uh, and so that is a wonderful combination of qualities. According to the USIS website, Pitt's global vision, and now I'm quoting, fosters an environment and proud tradition of pioneering work in international education and research. And the Chef Faculty Award was created to recognize a faculty member who demonstrates this kind of pioneering vision for international education. Professor Brand's career stands as an inspiring example of sustained and highly successful efforts to advance such a vision. His pioneering efforts changed the culture of our law school, added to the stature of our university, advanced understandings of some of our most important national values in 
other lands and have enriched the learning experiences of countless students, both domestic students and international students. Uh, when Ron was a young faculty member, and if you've taken a look at him, you know that was many, many years ago, <laughs> Uh, the Pitt Law School was essentially a wasteland when it came to international offerings. Uh, earlier faculty recruitment initiatives focused on true internationalists, as we saw it, uh, really hadn't delivered the expected results. Uh, and so to show you how clearly we envisioned all of the things that we're celebrating today, we actually hired Ron as an estates and trusts professor uh, and kind of grudgingly agreed as a part of the recruitment effort that he could teach one course in private international law. Uh, from that foundation, uh, Ron won over the faculty and built an area of acknowledged strength, not only for the school, but for the larger university. Uh, and to give credit where it's due, all of this started with Burkhard Holzner, uh, who was then the distinguished director of the University Center for International Studies. Uh, Burkhardt came to me, then a young law school dean, and suggested that we compete for a USIA grant uh, in a competition that was being sponsored to celebrate the bicentennial of the Constitution. Uh, we put together a team, we made an application, we won. Uh, Ron was the first Pitt faculty member to travel to the University of Augsburg to teach as a part of this grant. Uh, and then he essentially became the de facto director of that program. In the years that followed, the distinctive contributions made by international faculty members to the uh, learning environment within the school uh, and the learning experiences that were uh, shared by Pitt faculty members when they traveled abroad uh, resulted in dramatically more hospitable attitudes within the school toward international initiatives. Making the most of that opportunity, Ron built his own enviable reputation as a teacher and scholar of impact. Uh, just to give one example, he has now been a member of our State Department's delegation to the Hague Conference on Private International Law for more than 25 years. Uh, and this past summer, that group concluded its work on its most recent treaty, the 2019 Hague Convention on the Recognition and Enforcement of Judgments in civil and commercial matters, which may not sound too exciting to some of you. Amy and I, being civil procedure people, relate to that. Uh, but it is tremendously important. Uh, even more directly relevant to today's gathering, Ron took the lead in creating graduate programs for foreign lawyers within our law school served as the founding director of our Center for International Legal Education, and created distinctive programs with incredible impact in other parts of the world. Particularly given the starting point that I described, and that really was pretty accurate, uh, it is hard to believe that Pitt's Center for International Legal Education uh, will celebrate the 25th anniversary of its founding next year. Uh, in commenting on the center at the time of its 20th anniversary, uh, Professor Brand emphasized that from the start, its focus had been on students. Uh, to provide some sense of the impact of the center on our domestic students, 
Since 1997, it has provided 215 Pitt students with internships in 61 different countries. Again, quoting from the center's 20th anniversary report, they have experienced private practice, government, civil society, and other placements that have made them practice ready for global careers. They also have traveled with Pitt Law faculty throughout the world, helping train law students and lawyers in other countries. At the same time, the foreign lawyers who study at Pitt or do research here through either of our graduate programs are going back to their home countries and into influential positions with a solid grounding in and new appreciation for the American legal system. At the time of the CILE's 20th anniversary celebration, the most recent data available to me, our School of Law had graduated 252 LLM students from 68 different countries, and of course those numbers have grown since then. Over the years, Ron has found ways to create a regular flow of funds into the law school from the State Department and the Department of Commerce. Particularly noteworthy is the funding received from the Commercial Law Development Program of the Department of Commerce, which in the case of Pitt and on the recommendation of Ron, has focused on aiding law schools in other countries, particularly in the Persian Gulf, uh, to develop their curricula in the areas of international law and arbitration. Among the fundamental ideas underpinning that effort is that countries naturally will have greater respect for the rule of law if they understand the laws to which they may be subject and also have developed the skills essential to protecting their interests within the framework of those laws. Participating countries have included Afghanistan, Bahrain, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, Iran, Iraq, Jordan, Kosovo, Kuwait, Lebanon, Oman, Palestine, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Serbia, Sri Lanka, Tunisia, Ukraine, and the United Arab Emirates, uh, which just sharing that list gives you some sense of the impact. One of the key programs is tied to the VIS International Commercial Arbitration Moot uh, that is held every year in Vienna. Uh, most of the countries participating in the programs of the Pitt Consortium or the Brand Consortium uh, have lacked experience with such student competitions uh, and as noted above, also seek deeper understandings both of the underlying commercial law and of the arbitration process. Providing a major source of help in this area, Professor Brand has sent training teams into these countries, typically both in the fall and in the spring, uh, and then has arranged a preliminary competition which leads into the Vienna competition uh, in which teams from all of these countries also now compete. In 2016, the Commercial Law Development Program of the U.S. Department of Commerce uh, renamed the award presented to the best team in the Middle East pre-moot competition of the Ronald A. Brand Award in recognition of his work on behalf of students throughout that region. Uh, to be clear, these are not the only programmatic efforts that have been undertaken uh, by Professor Brand and the Center for International Legal Education. 
Uh, let me cite just a few other examples. Uh, Professor Brand and Professor uh, Haider Hamoudi, who is sitting in the front row here today, uh, provided training for Iraqi judges, including the Chief Justice of the uh, Iraqi Supreme Court, on international sales contracts, corporate structures, and minority shareholder rights. For the past several years, Professor Brand has worked with the Open Society Foundation in its Palestinian and Middle East rule of law and higher education support programs, among other things, helping uh, so to select Palestinian students for fellowships to study law in the United States. For several years, Professor Brand and the center conducted training programs for U.S. Steel lawyers uh, employed in Slovakia, Serbia, and the United States uh, with the goal of helping lawyers who had been trained in the uh, markedly different common law and civil law systems uh, to work more effectively together. Uh, and both here and abroad, the center has sponsored major programs on important areas of the law that have attracted uh, high-ranking international participants and brought new and very important attention to the uh, law school and to the university. Uh, to return to the language that I cited at the beginning of this presentation, Ron really has been a true pioneer. Uh, within the faculty of the law school uh, in advancing programs, uh, within the university, and most importantly, in distinctively and effectively advancing the cause of legal education within the broader international community. Uh, having been a close observer of these efforts, uh, I can say that particularly in the early years, uh, that was sometimes uh, lonely work, uh, but Ron never stopped uh, pushing forward and making things bigger and better uh, for all of the people who stood to uh, advantage themselves through their exposure to these programs. Uh, and so it is my pleasure uh, to join with Dean Wildermuth in presenting Ron Brand for the 2019 Chef Distinguished Faculty Award uh, for International Achievement. And it is my understanding, Dean and Professor, that I'm to invite you to return to the front of the room for photographs. I give you Ron Brand. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Uh, thank you, Amy, for uh, remarks that were uh, far too generous, I'm afraid. Uh, I must say that, that one of the reasons uh, that being at Pitt Law for 37 years has been so wonderful for me is that, Mark, I've had the chance to work with you uh, over the course of that entire period. And I can tell you all that uh, Mark and I have taught overseas together. Uh, his first trip overseas was to do that with me. Uh, and we have represented the university overseas and that has been uh, a wonderful experience and I, I've really enjoyed being able to do that together. Uh, it is my distinct uh, honor to currently be the Chancellor Mark A. Nordenberg University professor and that 
is uh, a name that uh, is, is very special to have uh, uh, with mine. And I, I Mark, it's been, it's been uh, a great ride so far. Uh, I also want to express special thanks. Mark mentioned uh, Rene Martinagel, who is here, who was the first to nominate me for the Chet Award. Uh, Rene is, uh, was a student in the very first class I taught at Pitt Law 37 years ago. Uh, she is the personification of, of a lifelong international legal education. Uh, she, uh, for a number of years, represented a European company uh, in its operations in the United States. Uh, when she became a grandmother, she decided there were some other things she wanted to accomplish. She went back to law school, got an LLM in the United States, got a PhD in the United Kingdom, uh, and, and is now is really one of the world's leading experts in international uh, environmental and water law. So, Renee, thank you for that. Uh, I do most especially uh, want to thank my wife, Mary, uh, who, who's here, uh, who has put up with those 37 years of travel and absences. Uh, she sometimes traveled with me, but has learned that when she travels with me, most of the time I'm working, even on weekends. Uh, so thank you, Mary. The Sheth Award, I think, is a very special uh, honor, uh, and it's, it is that for a number of reasons. Uh, the first of those reasons is that uh, it's the people who created it. Uh, in particular, I think Dr. Sheth and his wife, not only for their philanthropy, uh, but for their foresight uh, in creating an award that encourages and highlights international education at the University of Pittsburgh. It really is a good thing that we can get together and celebrate that each year. And the Sheth Award allows us to do that. Second, the Sheth Award is special because of those who have received it in the past. Uh, it is indeed a very special club, and I'm uh, honored to become the newest member of that club. I would note that last year's recipient of the Sheth Faculty Award, Dr. P.J. Reddy, truly is a giant in the field of international medical education. Uh, I will make, and you've already heard further reference to another award winner, uh, Vyosa Osmani, whom I will mention again. Uh, most of all, however, the Sheth Award uh, to me is special because it comes at the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, I truly believe this is a special place for international teaching, scholarship, and service. The unique creation of the University Center for International Studies, USIS, when other, when other universities were creating international relations departments, uh, meant that at Pitt, both students and faculty can study any discipline and still have access to, to some of the world's best centers for area and global studies. The opportunity that creates for cooperation through interdisciplinary work has made my work at the law school more efficient, more effective, and eminently more enjoyable. This is a university with a structure for international programs that truly does make a difference. And the people at USIS have always been among the best in the university. When I began teaching at Pitt Law, Burkhardt Holzner, Tom McKechnie, and Gleema Burke among others, demonstrated the passion, commitment, and dedication that set the example for all of us in engaging in international education. From the current director and vice provost, Ariel Armini, to the entire USIS staff, I have seldom found anyone in the USIS family that is not only committed to their work, but excited about doing it every day. I have also witnessed the level of dedication to the international at Pitt Law and our Center for International Legal Education. Dean Wildermuth, in only a year, has provided, has proved her commitment to a global approach to legal education. And Rick Thorpe, and most recently Emily Schlauk, have been wonderful in bringing that commitment to real results to students at the University of Pittsburgh School of Law. Uh, the ability to engage in truly international education at the University of Pittsburgh and at Pitt Law has been, for me, a very special privilege. 
And I want to take this opportunity to share three anecdotes uh, from the perspective of that privileged position and experience. Anecdotes that I believe demonstrate just why this is a special place for international academic experiences. The first anecdote provides an example and refers to someone that's been mentioned already. Uh, but an example of the type of students I've been privileged to work with and learn from at the University of Pittsburgh. When we created the Center for International Legal Education in 1995, I told those who would listen to me that my goal was to have LLM students who were good enough to turn down Harvard and come here. I believe that many of our students, both in past years and in the current year, are in that category. We just pulled them away before they could apply to Harvard. <laughs> One of those students was Vyosa Asmani from Pristina, Kosovo. I met Vyosa on my first trip to Kosovo when she was 19. Mark Walter, uh, who was assistant director of CILE at the time, had relayed to me that others had told him that Vyosa was destined to be a leader in Kosovo. Vyosa was a student in our first summer school in Pristina. Her performance in that course was strong enough that we chose her to be a member of the first Vismut team we created at the University of Pristina. And her performance on that team was strong enough that we brought her to Pitt to do an LLM. She completed her LLM in 2005. She went back to Kosovo, where she very quickly became legal advisor and chief of staff to the president of Kosovo. She returned to Pitt Law to do an SJD, a doctorate degree, which she completed in 2015. While she was doing her doctorate, she became a member of parliament. As was mentioned, she received the second most votes of any person in parliament. Uh, in a country where they didn't think women could be elected to those kinds of positions. And a week ago yesterday, she came within 1% of becoming the next prime minister of Kosovo. Now, she will be in the coalition government, and I can tell you she will have an impact there. To teach at the university level is a privilege. Uh, to teach at Pitt Law is a very special privilege. To teach students like Vyosa Asmani is to understand the privilege of learning more from your students than they'll ever learn from you. That is what I believe international education can and should be about. My second anecdote involves our work that you've already heard a little bit about at CILE that engages in outreach to law schools in transition countries. Uh, through cooperation that began with Pitt's Center for Russian and East European Studies in particular, CILE has had nearly 20 years of experience in partnerships with law schools in Ukraine, Serbia, Kosovo, and Bosnia, and more recently in more than a dozen countries in the Middle East. We have used the Willem Viss International Commercial Arbitration Moot Competition as a platform for that work, and first with the assistance of the State Department and most recently the Commerce Department, we have trained Vismut teams at schools in more than 20 countries. Notably, more than a dozen Pitt Law students and alumni have traveled with me to the Middle East and to Vienna to help uh, in that training. One of them, Kate Drabecki, is here today and she was the very first. She and Katerina Asanova, she started that process. The training begins in the fall with a session that this year will be held next week in Abu Dhabi and continues in February and March with more training and a pre moot that's been mentioned. This year that will be in Bahrain. Uh, we then go on to Vienna where the process culminates uh, at the competition in Vienna. And that competition involves more than 350 schools from more than 80 countries. This past year a Saudi team in the consortium all women, was the first Middle East team to break the glass ceiling and make it to the round of 64 teams in the competition. And a Bosnian team that was part of the Pitt Consortium made it to the semifinals of the competition. Now I should note that the Pitt Law teams in the last two years have ranked number 14 and number 15, which is not too bad in that many teams. At the Middle East pre-moot that we have prior to 
Vienna, we present a very special award, a traveling trophy to the winning team. That trophy was given to us for that purpose by Albert Kritzer. Al had a distinguished career in law. He was the general counsel at General Electric Company. But after that, he landed at Pace Law School, where he created what was a sophisticated and very important database of texts, commentary, and case law on the UN Sales Convention, the CISG, which is the substantive law applied in the Vesmut problem each year. This means, of course, that the database is used by all the students participating in the Vesmut. About the time we were considering the creation of a Middle East premoot, I met with Al. And he told me he wanted to support the premoot by providing a special trophy. He did so and had a very special Steuben glass piece of art designed that he called the Bridge of Friendship. The fall before the first Middle East premoot, Al was honored by the Arab Society of Commercial Law for his work on the CISG database, and in particular for his efforts then to create an Arab language, Arabic language version of that uh, database. Before the ceremony in Egypt, El took his family uh, to Egypt and took them on a boat trip on the Nile, during which he became ill. He was taken to a hospital in Cairo, and he died there. The following spring, we presented the Bridge of Friendship trophy to the team that won the first Middle East Vis Premoot. On the base of that trophy, Al Kritzer, a Jewish boy from Brooklyn, had had inscribed in Arabic a verse from the Quran, which roughly translated says, God made of us many tribes so we might work together. I have been privileged each year to be the person who presents that trophy to the winning team at the Middle East Premoot, and we'll do so again at the 10th Middle East Premoot next spring. That, I believe, is what legal education can and should be about. My final anecdote takes less time to tell. Uh, several years ago, we held a Middle East training for the Vismut in Amman, Jordan. It was the third year the University of Jordan had been involved in the competition, and a law firm in Amman wanted to try to help their team improve. So prior to the training session, they asked me to come and meet with the students from the prior team and the current team and talk about how their team might do better in the competition at the Vis Moot. As part of that discussion, we asked each of the students from the prior year's team what the participation in the Vis Moot had meant to them. One young woman very quickly said, that's easy. After the Vismut, we no longer fear the future. That is what I think international legal education can and should be about. My hope is that these anecdotes will help all of you understand in some small way why it is that I feel such a sense of privilege to be engaged in international education and international legal education in particular, and why I feel so privileged to be doing it here at the University of Pittsburgh. To the Sheth family, to the University of Pittsburgh, to USIS, to the School of Law, and to everyone I've been able to call a student and a colleague, I say thank you for allowing me this most wonderful of privileges. Congratulations again, Ron. 
You know, as a member of the committee that had the privilege of reading this year's submissions, for both awards, I can confess that this next award winner really moved us. Uh, those who nominated him in particular um, wrote some really fascinating letters about the project that Silver is advancing. And it was incredibly humbling to understand, as anyone who is living a privileged life in US America these days can understand, the bureaucracies, the challenges of, of building a school where nothing existed physically or intellectually, and that a Pitt alum inspired um, by the work that he did here in the School of Education uh, with committed faculty and peers uh, has been able in a very short time to accomplish. And so it is a great privilege um, to honor Silver today and to invite Dean Valerie Kinlock to speak of the School of Education's mission and focus as regards global learning. Valerie Kinlock began her tenure as the Renee and Richard Goldman Dean of the University of Pittsburgh School of Education in July 2017. And she immediately made her mark on the school, on the university, and the community with her passion for education, learning, and engagement. Dean Kinglock is dedicated to advancing our school's unwavering commitment to igniting learning through equity, justice, and innovation. Under her leadership, the School of Education has become known as a school that offers high quality academic programs and which approaches learning as intertwined with health, wellness, and human development. Dean Kinlock is a highly respected educator whose areas of scholarship focus on the literacy, language, culture, and community engagement of youth and adults as it occurs both inside and outside of schools. Her research has been supported by the U.S. Department of Education, National Council of Teachers of English, Corporation for National and Community Service, and the Spencer Foundation, among other notable organizations. Prior to joining Pitt Education, Dean Kinlock spent nine years in the College of Education and Human Ecology at The Ohio State University. She also served as the college's Chief Diversity Officer and Director of the Office of Diversity and Inclusion. Before Ohio State, Dean Kenlock taught at Columbia University's Teachers College and the University of Houston downtown. Dean Kinlock is the author of numerous books on race and literacy, including the critically acclaimed works, Harlem on Our Minds, Place Race in the Literacies of Urban Youth, Crossing Boundaries, Teaching and Learning with Urban Youth, and June Jordan, Her Life and Letters, Women Writers of Color. Dean Kinlock earned her Bachelor of Arts degree in English from Johnson C. Smith University at Wayne State University. She earned both her Master of Arts degree in English and African American Literature, and her PhD in English and Composition Studies with a cognate in Urban Studies. Please join me in welcoming Dean Kinlock to the stage. So thank you for that really warm and generous introduction. Oftentimes I sit and I listen to people read biographies of me and I sometimes think, who are you talking about? So thank you, Belkis, for the very kind introduction. I'm Valerie Kenlock. I'm the Renee and Richard Goldman Dean of our School of Education here at the University of Pittsburgh. And I am delighted to join you today in the celebration of contributions made by our faculty and by our alum around the world. And so let me first begin by thanking the Center for International Studies for organizing this wonderful event. So at the Pitt School of Education, we definitely have outstanding alumni doing amazing work with a global impact every day. And today's recipient of this award is truly exceptional. It is my personal pleasure to introduce the 2019 recipient of the Chef International Young Alumni Award, and his name is Mr. Silver Francis Anu. He is a 2012 graduate of our School of Education. 
He has a Master of Education degree in our special education area, and he also has a graduate certificate in African Studies. When I say that he is a proud alum, he is a proud alum, and although I was not the dean of our School of Education when he graduated, I accept him as an outstanding alum, and it is my honor today to be here as the dean of our school to present this award to him. He has faced significant obstacles in his life, but instead of being discouraged by those obstacles, he is a true example of someone who looks at those obstacles and who understands the importance of fueling that energy in order to have a great impact in the entire world. He is a native of Uganda. He lost his sight at the age of four after getting measles. In school, he did not have ready access to special education programs or any support services for children who are blind. Other children, and unfortunately also including some of his teachers, often picked on him. Fortunately, Silver later had the chance to attend a primary school for blind children. And from that very moment on, it became his dream to one day open a school in his native Uganda that would offer an inclusive, critical, humanizing, and caring form of education. He wanted this inclusive environment that would strive to educate all children and that would understand that all children are needy in terms of getting the support that they rightfully deserve. Silver left Uganda and lucky for us, he came here to the University of Pittsburgh. He enrolled in our School of Education and he developed the professional training to help him fulfill his professional and personal dreams. At Pitt and in our school, he developed relationships that would become instrumental in him pushing forward to procure funding and to eventually develop proposals for the school that he always dreamed he had when he first entered school himself. So in 2014, he broke ground on a new school in Uganda. Today, that school is known as the Silver Memorial Inclusive Community Center, or SMILE. How appropriate. And it enrolls over 200 students. The 200 plus students who are enrolled receive an opportunity to focus on how their lives and their living conditions can be improved through the power of education. And this is really important for me to actually say again. The 200 students plus who are enrolled in his school have an opportunity to understand how their lives can be transformed through the power of education. They are cared for, they are encouraged to dream big, they lead, and they become the types of people who are having an impact on the entire world. It is Silver who wanted to be sure that all students, regardless of their situations and living conditions, could feel safe and welcome inside of schools. He has made that dream a reality, and I am excited to be here today. I'm excited to also say that Silver is an embodiment of our School of Education's mission and vision to ignite learning. And I'm gonna actually do a little side step here. I'm gonna go off script, and I'm gonna say, whenever I think of the new mission and vision of our School of Education, I think about the impact that we already have in the world, but I also think about people like Silver. So I think the mission vision statement that we passed in January of this year for our School of Education is so appropriate to share at this moment because when I share this statement, I think of alum like Silver. So bear with me. Our mission vision statement for our School of Education says that we ignite learning. We strive for well-being for all. We teach. We commit to student, family, and community success. We commit to educational equity. We advocate. We work for justice. We collaborate. We form engaged partnerships. We cultivate relationships. We innovate and we agitate. We pursue and produce knowledge. We research. We disrupt and transform in equitable educational structures. We approach learning as intertwined with health, wellness, and human development. We address how national, global, social, and technological change impacts learning. We shape practice and policy. 
We teach women for dignity. We think, we dream, we lead, because we are the School of Education at the University of Pittsburgh. And this mission and vision statement that we have as a School of Education as of earlier this year, it is an embodiment of people and their impact, like Silver. He truly represents the best that we can all become. And he truly represents the ideals that make our School of Education our School of Education. I am also proud to point out that Silver is actually the second Chef Award winner from our School of Education who's been selected for impactful work in Africa, the second. Several years ago, Kakenya Natia, a graduate of our PhD program, received this exact same award. She's the founder of Kakenya's Dream, and her mission was to empower girls and transform communities in rural Kenya through education. What a similar theme. Empowerment, opportunity, access, and making space for those human beings who are oftentimes left on the periphery of our society, but who should be central to what we do in this world. And so as Dean, as a human being, regardless of title, it is empowering, it is transformative to think of the work coming from our School of Education, to think of the impact that our graduates have on this world. And so unfortunately, Silver could not be here today because of visa issues, but he sends his warm wishes to everyone. And in a moment, we will see a video of Silver offering a few words, and he'll talk about some of his time here at the university. But before we show this video, I would like to take just a moment to express some gratitude for some of the people who actually made this event possible today in order to have Silver as a recipient. And so if you are a faculty, or if you are staff, or if you are students or alum in the School of Education, would you please stand and be recognized? Maureen Porter, would you stand? I'm not sure if Paula Greenluck is here. Greenluck is here. Please stand as well. You both traveled to Uganda this past summer to meet Silver. And you produced the short documentary to raise, to raise awareness about our school. And so from me to you, I say thank you for the work that you do, especially thinking about the impact that our global education program can have on this entire world. And on the work that Silver is doing. So thank you for being here. I'm not sure if Silver's host family is here, Lorraine and Les. And so in their absence, let me acknowledge them, his host family, while he was here as a student at the University of Pittsburgh. And last but certainly not least, I have to acknowledge the Chef family on behalf of the entire university, and in this case, particularly our School of Education, we are greatly appreciative of all the support that you offer, especially when it comes to supporting our alumni and global education. And so, at this time, I'm gonna ask if our video can be played. Hey, my name is Silva Francis Oonyu. I am the winner of the Chef International Young Alumni Achievement Award of 2019-2020. Otherwise, if there was anything that I really wanted, uh, then it must be to come and receive the award myself at the University of Pittsburgh. However, this has not been possible because of the visa challenges. We tried, I tried, but up to now, I have not been able to get the visa. Otherwise, the award means a lot to me. It is a step in the right direction towards taking education to Silver Memorial, inclusive learning, education center, and all children with disabilities in Uganda will now onwards have a new beginning. They will have the assistive technology using JAWS. They will have Braille, uh, the North American Braille code, and their lives will not be the same. They will be able to unlock knowledge and be able to 
participate in the development of their economy, development of their country, and uh, the world over. My family, the University of Pittsburgh, wherever you are, I miss you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. So I excitedly and willingly and graciously accept this award on behalf of Silver Francis Anu. I will take it and I will, I will keep it in my office until he is able to be here and we are able to celebrate him face to face. So thank you. Thank you again, Dean Kinlock, for those uh, wonderful words. It's, um, if it wasn't evident before the beginning of this event, I think it's quite clear that both Jag and Madhu have become family for those of us uh, who have the privilege uh, to get to know them. And clearly, our, uh, thank go out, our thanks go out to them today for the opportunity to once again host this incredible event. Because he couldn't be with us today, Dr. Sheth has contributed a few words to share with us. Before we do, I'd like to just say a few words about Dr. Sheth for those of us who are meeting him today for the very first time. Dr. Sheth is nationally uh, known and internationally recognized for his scholarly contributions in consumer behavior, relationship marketing, competitive strategy, and geopolitical analysis. Professor Sheth has over 50 years of combined experience in teaching and research at the University of Southern California, the University of Illinois, Columbia University, MIT, and Emory University. Throughout his career, Professor Sheth has offered hundreds of presentations in at least 20 countries. He has also provided consulting for numerous companies in the United States, Europe, and across Asia. Professor Sheth's accolades include outstanding marketing Educator, an award presented by the Academy of Marketing Science, and the Outstanding Educator Award, twice presented by Sales and Marketing Executives International. Professor Sheth is also the recipient of all four top awards given by the American Marketing Association, the Richard D. Irwin Distinguished Marketing Educator Award, the Charles Coolidge Parlin Award, the P.D. Converse Award for Outstanding Contributions to Theory and Marketing, and the William Wilkie Award for Marketing for a Better Society. Professor Sheth is a Distinguished Fellow of the Academy of Marketing Science, Fellow of the American Psychological Association, and a recipient of a Distinguished Fellow Award from the International Engineering Consortium. He has authored or co-authored several hundreds of articles and several books, including Clients for Life, Tectonic Shift, Firms of Endearment, Chindia Rising, The Four A's of Marketing, Breakout Strategies for Emerging Markets, and most recently, The Sustainability Edge. In addition to his academic pursuits, Dr. Sheth works diligently to promote global thinking and international endeavors through the Sheth Foundation. It is because of this mission and his generosity that we accept nominations every spring for two awards that will benefit the University of Pittsburgh community and recognize commitments to the international community. Again, to Dr. Sheth and Mrs. Sheth, our deepest appreciation. Greetings. I'm Professor Jagdish Sheth, a proud alum of University of Pittsburgh a couple of generations ago. I'm sorry I cannot be there in person this year. However, I wanted to congratulate two recipients of the 2019 Sheth International Awards. Silver Francis Onyo for the Young Alum Award and Professor Ronald Brand for the Faculty Award. 
silver, what you have done is absolutely awe-inspiring. Despite all the hardships, you had the determination and the tenacity to get educated. You came to Pittsburgh and did your master's degree. And now you have the purpose and the passion to give back to the country in Uganda by starting your own school for the blind children. I also want to very much congratulate Professor Brand because the Pittsburgh Law School, if there is one individual who really internationalized, gave a global perspective in the law discipline, is you. Your contribution, both doing things abroad as well as in Pittsburgh in the law school, again, are exemplary. My congratulations to both of you. I also want to congratulate and thank Vice Provost Ariel Armory for excellent job he has done as a leader of the International Center for expanding the globalization of University of Pittsburgh. Your leadership is the one that is able to get such great nominations of candidates and a good committee that selects the candidates. And ultimately, we have this year's recipients who actually basically make the award even more meaningful for the future award winners. I also definitely want to congratulate University of Pittsburgh. Like all universities, the mission, of course, is to unlock the potential of others, especially students. And unlocking the potential of humans is probably the ultimate noble cause we can have. If you take a grain of wheat and make it into a loaf of bread, the value add is only about three times an agricultural commodity. If you take a rough diamond, polish it, a good diamond cutter will come out the luster, the shine, and the value will go about 15 times. But if you take a human being, mentor, educate, invest, nurture, the value add is infinite. And that's what this award is all about. None of us realizes our own potential. It is always somebody else or some institution that gives us the support, the nurturing, and suddenly so much of potential we have is unlocked to contribute back to the society. This is better than giving forward any way we do it. So I'm again very pleased and I want to congratulate the two award winners. I hope that program goes very well, and my best wishes. Thank you. Um, first off, I'd like to thank every, everybody for coming today. We had two really special award winners once again, um, if we could just one more time for Professor Ronald Brand and for Sower Francis on you as this year's winners. As Silver was not allowed to be here, I did want to let everybody know that between the Center for African Studies and the School of Education, we are going to work through Silver's visa issues. He will be on campus sometime soon and we'll let everybody know and you can come meet him and we'll have another celebration. Um, it was interesting, as I was here, we've talked about the live stream several times, and I've been getting messages from Silver, who's watching us right now from the UK, where he's actually studying on a scholarship at University of Leeds. He wanted to thank everybody for being here. He also wanted to thank us for recognizing his family that helped him so much while he was here in the United States. And he wants to say thank you to all his friends who are at home watching as well in Uganda and other places around the world. Um, Dr. Sheth is one of the most generous people I've been around and his wife Madhu created these awards to really recognize endeavors that were going on around the university and abroad that aren't always brought to the forefront when we talk about the University of Pittsburgh. It's something that makes these awards so special. It's really a great part of my job to do these every year and to recognize the winners. So with that, Thank you for coming for the 2019 Sheth International Awards. We look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you. <laughs>